Hello everyone and welcome to our first topic of our Geology 100 laboratory. Today we're going to be talking about plate tectonics, which is chapter two in your laboratory manual. Geology as a science, the study of the earth, all right? Study of all the processes and systems that change and morph and continue to change. Not only the surface of our earth, but also the deep ocean trenches and the workings that happen all the way down towards Earth's core. As geologists, we are very interested in observing and studying and experimenting and trying to figure out how our Earth formed, why it formed, what formed it, and what it will happen and what it will do in the future. Plate tectonics, or the theory of plate tectonics, is probably one of the most profound and important theories that we'll discuss the entirety of the semester. Plate tectonics in a nutshell is based on many kinds of information that geologists have pulled together through time. We see plate tectonics as one of these unifying theories. Plate tectonics is essentially saying that these hard rigid slabs on the surface of our earth are broken up into these plate-like features. And through time, they slowly and slowly move and change. They push together, they get pulled apart, they slide past one another. Maybe they get pushed underneath one and it starts recycling and melting. And eventually these plates will either conglomerate new material or they recycle, or a plate will completely disappear, or a new plate will form through time. Yes, this seems like a lot of information to wrap your head around right now, but what I want you to just focus on this idea is that these plates, these hard, rigid, solid slabs of rock are slowly moving across the surface of our earth and they're changing through time. And certain geologists have known, noticed very unique and discrete things about these plates. And that's essentially what we're gonna to discuss today. On the first screen that we have right here, you see a map with a ton of different colors, all right? For the most part, each one of these different colors represents a different plate, all right? Between these plates are obviously plate boundaries, which we'll get into. Currently, right now, we have 21 plates that form the surface of our Earth. 21, approximately 21. Why, is, why I say approximately 21 is that we do have one plate, the Juan de Fuca plate, which is currently getting pushed underneath the North American plate as the Pacific plate is getting squished up into North America. So maybe, who knows? Not in our lifetime, but millions of years from now, Juan de Fuca plate will be no longer. It'll essentially be swallowed and recycled. So we'll go from 21 plates to 20 plates. As I said earlier, plate tectonics is a scientific theory that explains the large scale movement, the very slow, but over, we're talking over millions, hundreds of millions of years, the movement of these rigid slabs across the surface of the earth. How do you think we get all these mountains, the Himalayas, the Appalachian Range, the Rocky Mountains? How do you think we get these deep sea trenches or these mid-ocean sea vents, all right? Or these large expansiveness that just move across the United States. Those essentially have formed over time, and we explain that by the theory of plate tectonics, the movement of these plate slabs, these plate bodies through time, all right? Each one of these plates moves across the mantle, all right? So as you guys move on through the PowerPoint, you'll start becoming familiar with the terminology of the lithosphere, the asthenosphere, the mantle, the core, and our Earth's crust. How I like to see Earth's interior, such as what makes up the Earth, think of it as like a hard-boiled egg. For Habo egg, you have this yolky center, this yellow yolk. And then on the outside, you have the, the egg white. And then, obviously, a hard boiled egg. Then we have the hard shell on the outside. That's essentially the model of Earth's interior, where that yellow egg yolk in the center would be Earth's core. The egg white would be Earth's mantle, all right? And then the very thin outer layer would be Earth's surface, all right, which would be the crust or the lithosphere. Plate tectonics is just a modern theory of Alfred Wegener's The Theory of Continental Drift. Now, Alfred Wegener had proposed that there once existed, you know, he had stated somewhere between 200 and 300 million, 
million years ago, the supercontinent Pangaea. And what he noticed was at one point, the supercontinent Pangaea was you could take all of the continents, think about all the modern continents nowadays, North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Australia, and you essentially put them all together, they form together and they push together just like jigsaw pieces, right? He observed that at one point, all of these continents must have been pushed together. And this is what he proposed was a supercontinent Pangaea. But obviously it doesn't exist today. So he proposed at one point they were pushed together and now they're all spread apart. So he theorized that Earth's surface must be broken up into these solid ridge slab bodies that slowly move through time. However, there were some flaws in his theory. And one of the biggest ones is that he couldn't explain the mechanisms that drove the forces that could explain these large scale movement of these solid slab and rigid rock bodies across the surface of the earth. It wasn't until later on that many more scientists came along to develop the theory a little bit further and they were able to provide some mechanisms. And these mechanisms, one of them, mantle convection, we'll be talking about in just a second here. The biggest driving force of plate tectonics is mantle convection. Think about down, deep down in the, the Earth's core. It is super duper hot. Earth's core is about as hot as the surface of the sun. Where do you think all that heat goes? Does it get trapped there or does it just want to radiate out towards Earth's surface? That's essentially what happens, all right? We know the Earth's surface isn't as hot as the sun, so it's a little bit cooler. So what happens when you have something really hot and something really cold? The something that's really hot is going to want to rise and the something that's cold is going to want to sink because the hot stuff is coming up, it's heating the cold, and now as the cold gets heated up, it wants to sink, all right? The cold stuff is denser than the hot stuff, so the dense stuff is going to sink and the hot stuff is going to rise. So essentially what we call this mantle convection, these cold sinking, these hot rising cells that just continue to move. Now this heat from, the up, from this mantle, all right, just underneath Earth's crust, these solid ridge slabs that move across the surface of the earth. This fluid, this really sluggish flow is slowly pushing and pulling and ripping apart these plates through time. But how do they move, all right? In which directions do they move? How do they move with respect to one another? We call these essentially these movements, we can call them based upon the boundaries, all right? And we call these plate boundaries. We notice that the surface of the earth, these plates like to have three main movements. Either they get pushed together, they get pulled apart, or they slide past one another. This pushing together, we call that when two of these plates get pushed together, that boundary between them, we call those convergent boundaries. When you push two plates together, right, whether they be continental crust or oceanic crust, continental crust being that dry stuff that we can live on as humans, the oceanic crust, that being the crust that is submerged by these vast expanses of these oceans. Either these slabs, these solid rock bodies of these, uh, continental crust or oceanic crust, when they get pushed together, we call that a convergent battery. When they get pushed together, what do you think they want to do? Either one will get pushed underneath another one, either they get pushed to go and they both want to go up, all right? And then we have a divergent boundary. So we can push together these solid rock bodies, we call that a convergent boundary. When we rip them apart, we call that a divergent boundary. So diverging away from one another, we're getting pulled apart. Now in this figure here, we have a divergent boundary and we call those mid-oceanic ridges, which is a common one. What happens when you rip two of these really thick crustal slabs together? We begin to expose this really hot fluid mantle. And that's essentially how we can get some of these underwater volcanoes, all right? This mantle that's just pushing its way through these two solid rock slab bodies that are ripping themselves apart, all right? The last boundary that we have is when you take two, two of these plates and they start sliding past one another. And we call that a transform boundary. One of the most famous transform boundaries that you all know is the San Andreas Fault, all right? This San Andreas Fault is something that runs very close to, all right? So when you feel all these rumbles down here in Southern California, those are occurring on or just near the San Andreas Fault. 
all right? As you guys progress through this module here, looking at plate tectonics, I want you to think about what plate tectonics is as a theory, what it can cause, the mechanisms that drive plate tectonics in the first place, but also how we as humans can see it manifesting itself. We know we can't just build mountains overnight. These plates move very, very slowly. Plate movement occurs approximately three centimeters a year. Just about how fast your nail grows. So how can we move a giant place almost thousand kilometers? It takes millions and millions of years. But during these time, these little micro movements can cause so much changes. So when we start talking about plate tectonics, and especially the coming modules, we'll start talking about earthquakes, all right? We'll start talking about volcanoes. Plate tectonics as this unifying theory explains a lot of these changes, these long-term and short-term changes that we see as geologists and we observe through time. At the very end of this PowerPoint, you'll see here that we have um, a plate boundaries animation. I highly suggest that you all click on this and watch it. It's going to walk you through the convergent boundaries, the divergent boundaries, and the transform boundaries. Another really great resource to help you guys get through these modules and the exercises we have is by reading the first couple sections within chapter two in your laboratory manual. If you have any more questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me and I'll be able to answer and help you guys guide through our first topic, which is plate tectonics. Take care, y'all.